Well, this is very odd. All right. Well, and who am I speaking to? Max, hi. Mm-hmm, yes. Um, and what is it that you have in question? Okay, I'm recording, so uh, if you don't mind, uh, I would like to publish the conversation. So oh, yes, yes. Speak in a way which is uh, suitable. Don't, um, you know, don't <laughs> say what, whatever is you don't want to be recorded. I see. Thank so you. that means that anything that would be considered security would be unacceptable. Right. Uh, so oh, of course, of course. I'm reading about Lyndon Johnson. Yes. Uh, are you familiar with that figure? I am familiar. Nice. So I, I just, as, as I read, I realized that the idea of global conspiracy maybe was a little bit over, uh, over hyped, over inflated. I think it was more like global stupidity rather than conspiracy. That's my, my, my look at, uh, currently mm. as I studied the politics of, uh, now I got to the year of, uh, 1949. It looks like it's just global irresponsibility. I don't see a, a single hand driving the, the history. It's more like many stupid decisions were done just by, because of stupidity, not because of, of course, evil intentions. Okay. Well, because one hand doesn't know what the other is doing. Uh -huh. It would have to be completely connected to be doing a world conspiracy or at least 80% connected to do any kind of a world conspiracy with any kind of positive outcome. And they were all disconnected in almost every possible way that you can imagine because the communications between them were not even honest for the most part. And so how could they possibly unite in any way? Mm -hmm. so, so obviously it looks like Hitler was helped by the aliens, but the Americans yes. were largely not aware, even the, the rulers. Well, the thing is, eventually the aliens who saw what were happening outside, they, they discovered that the Nords were working with Hitler and the German army and the German scientists. So they had to equalize it and send someone to help on, on the other side to equalize the effect because it was an unfair war at that time because... Germany was uh, winning by leaps and bounds, so they had to equalize it so that there was a, a chance to, uh, for the other side to win. Otherwise, world domination would have been very, very awkward there. It would not have been world domination. It would have been, it would have been a chaotic mess. Right. But still, um, still, as you were looking at it this way, they uh, sent in a couple of their um, special decoders from uh, the Galactic Council agreed with this so that they could actually mess up the codes from the other side and make sure that uh, they were not uh, going to win that easily. There still was a chance that they could win, but this equalized the field and actually helped uh, mm, the the side that won win. Uh -huh. so, so the military were working with the aliens during the war. The American yes, military. but they didn't always know it. They didn't always know it. Uh huh. Did the president they were know? aware of the? They were aware that there was some alien activity because there were some unexplained things mm -hmm. in their documents that they could not. Uh, that they still have never released to the public, uh -huh. uh, sightings and underwater phenomena, things of this nature that uh, were reported, but never uh, uh, released to the public. And also there were sightings, of course. And uh, in one instances in England, there were actually aliens on the ground um, right after a particular bombing situation. And, uh, they were sighted, at least uh -huh, uh -huh. a handful of them. Some sort of forest, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, is it now? So at that point, it was a very minimal involvement of aliens in um, yes. outside of Germany. But um, 
now is 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 it now different well yes it is very different because there are aliens doing all kinds of things for humanity but they are not actually working inside the society as much as they did in the past let me explain you see according to galactic rule and galactic government at this time they are not allowed to come in and influence society or government in any way that would make a difference to the future of or the outcome uh, of the species. Does that make sense to you? Uh, yes, but I have a question, but that's okay. Please continue. So they are working outside of the governments and outside <laughs> of what the galactic government would see as any place uh, that could uh, change the destination of the species. However, they are making, they are influencing uh, some portions of human society to make a difference about the end result. All right. So when um, Gork Fitnir negotiates with the governments, yes. Uh, they work in from outside and it is permitted. That's, that's how it is? Yes, but there are a few, and, well, perhaps I shouldn't go there. There are some, but, you know, the galactic government does not know that there are some that are on the ground and that are working in, uh, in places that would probably not be acceptable. Right, right. Uh, so, um, I guess that cannot be disclosed, but what can be disclosed, what are the plans? Uh, it looks like there is an outside force which has a plan. There is. It's the basic plan, without going into a great amount of detail, would be to keep the species alive, mm -hmm. to keep it vital and working. Mm -hmm. uh, keeping the axis in, in line. You, I know that... You, there is not much published about the Axis, but this is a great concern for many aliens because the Axis... Do you know about the, uh, the scientific fact that your planet flips over at least once every eight or 900,000 years? Uh, yes, except the number I think is different, but yes. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, that what they told us was 800 and some thousand years. But anyway, it's not always accurate because it can change. There have been interludes where it's only 600,000. And then there have been interludes where it's been over 11,000, uh, 1100, whatever. It, it is that it is not a consistency time period. It's not like a clock. It happens whenever magnetic fields and things of this nature come into alignment with certain areas of the, the suns and the planets and things of that nature, and it causes the, the movement. Mm -hmm. So, that is one of the great things. Right now is a very prime time for that kind of movement on your, uh, your axis system. So they're keeping that as aligned as possible. However, when it moves a fraction with one way or another, it can cause weather changes and our earthquakes and uh, volcanic reactions. Right now in Bali, you're having a, a major volcanic episode. Mm -hmm. But there will be others. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in terms of economy, I'm I'm very interested in what will happen to the economy, and um, it looks what very hopeless. Question: We are watching this closely. There is many different uh, suggested outcomes or predictions, if you will, because there is many different hands in what's uh, considered the mainstream of the economy. Now, 
you have those that are, are the wealthiest people on your planet, and they do have a hand in the economy as well. But they cannot keep up with how to move or generate uh, the balance that is necessary to keep everything in line. You see, they would want the economy not to collapse because that would mean the end of their fortunes and the end of their ruling or their hand in the ruling of the earth. They do not rule the earth in the sense that they have political jurisdiction, but they do rule the earth when it comes to what is selling and, and who is buying, etc. In many senses, they have a good working knowledge of the stream or flow of thoughts that are going through societies all over the world. They have their finger on the pulse of humanity. But there are those that are foolish about how to run uh, financial institutions. They're foolish about how to make good deals. And some of these people are in very high places and are making very foolish decisions, which also affects the wealthiest people of the planet that make them wonder about the balances that they are trying to keep. Also, there is other influences, such as diverse changes in the weather and the activities of the earth, because these do affect the financial structures. You see, money pouring into areas that have been hit with great difficulties depletes the budgets of some places that need their budgets for wonderful and financial growth or for export import information or development and so with these great storms and earthquakes and things of this nature it changes financial income and outflow on a daily basis uh-huh um yeah i we are looking at the different models of humanity. It looks like every, everything has been tried and all the systems which, are, which occur, like uh, socialist, communist, yes. hybrid system, capitalist. Uh, it, all, it will all meet its own failure in a time. This system is not uh, ever going to be completely successful and will have to collapse at some point. Now, the smartest of the financial economists, what do you, I guess you would call them, uh -huh. are seeing that this is true, that there is no way to keep a balance or a security with the financial systems. Spain and Italy and Greece, mostly Spain and Greece, are very financially uh, uh, ready to surrender or fall, mm -hmm. but they have been bailed out a couple different times, but whether they will be bailed out again will be questionable. So this will mean a great deal of chaos if they are not, and a sure collapse of part of the financial system because China <coughs> is not far behind them. Their financial systems are very unstable. There's too many, there's too much money in circulation and there is not enough of gold or whatever they're using to back it up. I believe it is gold. So, um, how, you, how, how would you see the future financial system of Earth when, when it is finally solved? Like, I would I mean, like well, to After see, the crisis, what, what would happen? I would like to see a different kind of financial system rise. In fact, I would like to see it much more diverse you see the use of money as trade 
makes it ultimately powerful, which means that everyone must try to get money to survive. I would like to see a greater amount of imagination go into the financial groups so that trade, money, education, creativity, and many other things can be used to get necessities in life other than just money. It sounds very abstract. Can you explain what you mean? I would say, think that there would be a set of humans that would be able to tell how much each talent and skill is worth without having to pay for it, but they could change or exchange their artistic skills or musical skills for uh, food, clothing, and things that they needed. It sounds like barter. It is. I would like to see that happen more than it is now. This would bring a great deal of evenness to the populace. Right now, the money system is very efficient in many ways. There is, it is inefficient in many ways. It is disproportional in many ways, but it is quick. So it's quick, but it is not fair, and it is not actually smooth absolutely. because it yep. is corrupted. Yep. At one time, probably 60 years ago, it was actually smoother than it is now. Right. So how does it happen? How is it set up on in different different other uh, planets? It looks like Orion, we, we are using are we using Orion system of finances? Are we using Orion? You mean you? Are they humans? Humans are hum are using a very outdated form of finances that was originally. Um, used hundreds of years ago by the Kior, and I do not think any other system has been even close to that other than that one that I can think of. Are you saying but, that the galaxy uh, never uses the, that kind of electronic finances as we use now? It's all electronic. It would be more like Bitcoin in the universe, rather than money passed hand to hand, you would just electronically exchange uh, units in some ways. But there are other ways, but you see in the universe, galaxy, whatever, they also can ele electronically exchange not only coin, but property, and valuables and different things that may be of interest to other species, such as minerals, mm -hmm. uranium, plutonium. How is it different from Earth? What was the difference? We all, all, all already have electronic systems, so what is wrong with our system? You do not include, you only include money as a way of exchange. You do not use um, other things to exchange in your system. Oh, here is the answer. Okay, so instead of how do you, how do you include it? I don't know. Uh, so we have to have multiple currencies, and uh, part, some some currencies would be now not government money, but labor as a currency. Labor could be a currency if it is necessary and needed. And goods. How do you normalize goods? It still have to be expressed some, in some sort of number. You have to have someone assess the value of all things. So you have assessors going around, and if you do not have money, they will assess what skills and abilities that you have and put that on the market. Ah. I already have some, some sort of <clears throat> electronic... Yeah, that's what, what we use, like guru.com and other 
freelance uh, services, Uber. Yes, but they are not popular enough. So that's the future, right? So we will just have uh, talents more or less uh, assessed and everybody would uh, have their value calculated in, in talent. And, and as the thing is, it is not just uh, static. You can gain assets by gaining education, by, learn, by creating new and better items for assessment, by interacting with those and perhaps uh, drawing together your uh, different skills and abilities to be able to you to work as a company or corporation with just skills abilities and talents we have sort of that the, the companies go public and they uh, create their own actions i think it's called actions or oh, share share it's called x shares they create their own shares and uh, this is kind of a substitute for money but it doesn't look Small to me like amount of your society that it it is really not making a difference. Only money is sought after for the most part. Right. Ninety nine point four percent. So it looks to me, even if we add what you mentioned, uh, it will it wouldn't uh, cure the system. The system is sick anyway. It's hacked. It and needs to start again with new rules and regulations. Actually, the cure is actually making some inroads to your society because they know how to change it. They were the one species that had this system and was able to successfully transmute it into a better financial system. Did they do that through a big crisis or did they avoid no. the crisis? Small changes like your planet is going through now. But they, there are things such as Bitcoin, which is making a small change, but it has actually been fairly influential throughout the entire planet. Uh -huh. Also, they are starting to market the thought, uh, a gradual educational thought that those those that are educated or gain education and can be used in uh, expertise in areas should continue their educations and become more valuable. And then once they are needed, they can experience and show uh, their experience in their actual using of the knowledge that they have gained. And then when finished there, may go back to learning. Right. Super. I see. Um, I, unfortunately, I'm running out of time of my session. Uh, thank you very much. Can you, can you give me some sort of uh, your name or some uh, nickname which we could use if you want to invite you next time? Bash. Bash. Do you want to talk a little bit about yourself or do you want to keep it? Oh, I'm from Earth. Uh -huh. I am from, um, actually from Iceland on From Your Planet. Uh -huh. There was a time when the Kior and other species were uh, taking scientists and higher intelligent beings from the planet. The, a lot of this came here from the 50s, 60s, and very early 70s. Mm -hmm. Now, they, of course, have some people here from as far back as the 15th century. Mm -hmm. But lately, they wanted to bring a populace of humans into space to see how we adapted mm -hmm. to many different things. And actually, we have adapted quite well. Oh, when did you leave? I first lived on Kior. No, no, when uh, did you leave the Earth? Oh, in 1959. 
Ah. Oh, I think that's the year when Jim was born, more or less. No. Uh, well, I don't know for sure. Okay. But I think he is. Oh, very good. Yes, he was born in 55. Really? Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, how, how old are you now? Uh, is it the time? Is the time there uh, equivalent to our time? Yes, or? we live longer here. We will live into our hundreds here. The human body is f much more frail than some of the other species' bodies. So, uh, without a great amount of uh, attention, the body will wear out at about 125. Uh, how, um, how many humans are there where you are? From about uh, 550. And how many aliens work with you or live with you? The, I am surrounded by aliens. There's thousands of them. So, so it's like you rarely see humans and often see lots of aliens. Well, we are in our, we choose to live where we live. Mm -hmm. And some of us live close together, and other, others do not. I live in proximity to at least three or four other human, four other human. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, what is the place where you are? What's the name of it? It's the planet is Palana. Uh huh. Is the star? What is the star? Is it the secret? It's in the Pleiades. Oh, I got it. Which of the Pleiades? Which of the Pleiades? Yeah. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Like there is Tegeta, Maya, and many others. Oh, yes. The different star systems. Uh-huh. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, which of the Pleiadian stars is that? Mayar, yes. Mayar? Yeah. Okay. That's what you would call it. We don't call it that. Not oh. here. How but do you call it? It's Venzavas. Venzavas. Mayar Pleiades. Yes. We don't have it. Uh, Pleiades list stars. Hold on a second. Is it okay if I double cross cross check it? I don't know how you will, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, there are systems here. Seven sisters. Is it one of seven sisters? Yes. We have Kalena, Electra, Tageta, Maya, Asteropi 1, Asteropi 2, Mer Meropi, Alcyon, Atlas, and Pleione. None of the... None of Pleione. The, oh, Pleione. It's close to Polana. Um, but... We call it Pelana, you call it Pleione. Oh, so the Pleione is a star. So which planet of the Pleione would it be? Like number from the star? Fourth. Yay. So now we know your star. Beautiful. Thank you. Excellent. Um, super. The Thank planet you. we call Pelana after the star. Uh, so, and the, the cure, cure, are you surrounded by the cure oh, are not in the Pleiades. Oh, I got the it. Cure are in the Orion sector. So, what's the species which surrounds you, or several species? Oh, many Ple kinds of Pleiadians. What's the I name have of them? the tall, the tall and the short blues, the silver white Pleiadians, and the green Pleiadians. Aha! Uh -huh. Excellent. The Mayans are most popular here. They are from Maya. Well, that that is one area that is properly pronounced by humans. Uh huh. Sure. The Mayans are blue Pleiadians. They are tall and very advanced, and you will be meeting some of them on your planet. Yeah. One one in particular there, the king of Palana or Maya, and a uh, ruler there now is now in human form. King of uh, which, which place? Maya. King of Maya. Uh, what's his name? 
Tolska. Tolska. Super. Very nice. It would be nice to continue conversation with you. That part is uh, new to, to me and it's very exciting. You and uh, thank you for, yes. Thank you for the discussion of the economy. That is, uh, uh, that is important too. Excellent. There are so many different ways to discuss it. Of you course. can discuss it as a whole or in very many sectors or by country by country or many different ways. Yeah, and most of these ways are lead nowhere, <laughs> but some of these are very important. Yes.